Hello and welcome to all year six students who will be starting secondary school in September. This video is giving you an opportunity to try a chemistry lesson at home. And you can see I've got a red cabbage here and I'm going to use that and you're going to use it today to make an indicator. And just as cars have indicators to give information about which direction they intend to turn, this indicator is going to be used to test some household substances. And we're gonna find out if they are acid, neutral or alkaline. Okay, so I'm going to start off with my red cabbage. Okay, so I've just bought this from the supermarket and I'm going to cut through my red cabbage and you can see just at the top of the screen there, I've got um, a saucepan ready to take this red cabbage. Either this knife is blunt or my red cabbage is very tough to cut. So I've taken some of the red cabbage, don't need to go crazy and use all of it. I'm going to chop it up carefully like this and then I'm going to add that to my pan. Okay, I'm going to drop the other bit as well. Add all of that to my pan. Now there's a lot of natural um, food colouring in this red cabbage. You can use other different um, fruits and vegetables to make indicators. We've chosen the red cabbage because it's got a lot of those natural uh, red and purple dyes in it. And we're going to try and extract that um, by boiling it with some water. So the next thing I'm gonna do is add some water, not too much, okay? Because if I add lots and lots of water, I'm gonna make a really weak indicator. I'm gonna make an indicator um, that's that looks quite diluted, as if you've had orange squash and added lots and lots of water to it and then it's a bit too diluted. So you want it to keep it quite a concentrated um, indicator. So I'm just gonna add some water to the pan and then I'm gonna heat it on the hob. All I've done is add some cold water from the tap and you can see already that red and purple uh, coloring from the red cabbage is already going into the water there. So I'm gonna just give that a heat up and that will help all of that colouring to come out into the water. And that's going to be our indicator. So I've got a few different substances that I'm going to test in the home. And you can test whatever you can find in the home as well. Be careful with any uh, nasty cleaning chemicals. Maybe don't test those or test those with an adult. Um, so I'm just going to give that a good boil to get all of those colours out of there. As you can see, this is now boiling. It's been boiling for about five minutes and you can see just how dark, how concentrated that indicator is. So I'm gonna say that that is ready now. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put it through a strainer and collect it into a jug. So I put my jug and my strainer, it's like a small colander there, into the sink because I don't want to get this food dye over um, anything. So I'm just going to pour that in just so I can get rid of any of the bits of cabbage. Some of them are collected there, most of them have stayed in the pan. And now I have my red cabbage indicator. I'm going to let that cool now. That's really important that we let it cool so that we don't burn ourselves or have any mishaps when we use the indicator. So let's give it time to cool down. As you can see, I've now set up uh, my workspace. So I've got a couple of in, uh, different substances to test. I've got my indicator, which has cooled down, a plate and a chopping board. So here is my indicator. It's um, a really deep purple colour now. And if I look at the work pack, I can see here my red cabbage pH indicator. So I can see that down here um, in the red range, we've got really highly acidic. We border into the purple here and we get pH seven, which is neutral. So tap water would be neutral. And then we go into those deeper colors into green and we get slightly alkaline. Okay, that's the opposite of acidic. And then when we go into the uh, yellow and 
kind of a, a deeper yellow, maybe even orange, we get the really highly alkali substances. So this is how we're gonna to refer to this as we test some of our, our substances. Now I'm not gonna to get too carried away because the idea is that you're going to have a go at doing this and you're going to test things. So I don't want to give all the, the answers away. What I'm gonna do is I've got some lemon juice here, okay? And lemons are a citrus fruit. They've got citric acid in, so hopefully that's a bit of a clue. And I'm just gonna put some of that onto my plate there. Okay, and then I'm gonna use a spoon to, me two hands really, to take some of that indicator and I'm gonna pop it onto the acid. And as you can see, it's changed colour. So we can see it's gone from that deep purple colour to maybe somewhere around this region here. So I can say now that lemon juice is acidic. The indicator has changed colour and shown us that it's acidic. The next thing I've got to test, this is just a small amount of um, washing powder. So powder that we use to clean our clothes, detergent, mixed with some water. I'm gonna put some of that onto my plate. Hopefully it won't mix with the lemon juice too much. And then I'm going to use some more of my indicator and I'm gonna add it to there. Okay, and we can see that that color has gone more towards the alkali range, okay? It's got that kind of green tinge to it. So washing powder is more of an alkali substance. Now I've got um, some vinegar here as well. I'm not going to test that. I want to leave you to explore using the red cabbage indicator, having a go for yourself, seeing what different substances around the home you can test and find out whether they are acid, neutral or alkali. So neutral is in this uh, seven range here in the middle, okay? We might find that some things are more acidic or more alkali than others. Looking at our investigation pack, we can see we've got a table to record our results. So the thing that we're changing is the substance that we're going to test. So in this section here, I can write lemon juice or washing powder, however many things that I'm going to test, I can put in this section here. And in this part here, it's the um, substance that I would like to test that's going to go in there. What I'm gonna measure is the color change. So the color change of the indicator, so I could write in here pink, I could write in here green, and then my conclusion, is it an acid, a neutral, or an alkali substance? If you would like to, you can print and stick a photo of your experiment at home and put it in the gap here, okay? And then you can bring this pack when you start um, secondary school in September. Another way that we can use our red cabbage indicator is to stain a piece of paper. Now, for this, you need a piece of paper, like blotting paper, that is very absorbent. I've got some filter paper here, and I'm gonna take some of my indicator, and I'm going to just coat it over my filter paper. You can see how blue it looks, like this. And then what I can do with that later is when that's dried, I can cut it into pieces and I can use that as a paper indicator so I can use it to test my different substances. So when that's dry, we'll have a look at how we can use that. So the red cabbage indicator paper has now dried and you can see it's got that bluey tinge to it. I'm going to give that a go at testing that in my three solutions. So I can put it into my lemon juice and you can see that lovely pink colour. So it has um, given me that indication of the fact that it's acidic. And don't forget you can refer to your chemistry record pack there and you can see that colour matches up nicely with that kind of three or four on the indicator chart. And then I'm going to put the next piece into my washing powder. And that's got a lovely color change there. You can see that is probably pH 10 or 11 there. 
Okay, and then I've got my final piece I'm going to put into my tap water and I've got no colour change there, which isn't really a surprise. It's neutral. There was water in that red cabbage anyway. So that's our um, purple colour there, our pH 7. So try it yourself. Have a go with different um, substances that you have in the home. You don't have to use the substances I've used. Just be very, very careful with the substances that you choose and be safe with those. Maybe enlist the help of an adult. I thought while we were talking about indicators, it might be nice to look at a couple of indicators that we use in the lab and that you'll get a chance to use in September. So the first one I want to introduce you to is red litmus paper and blue litmus paper. Okay, so this is a piece of paper that we can use as an indicator. And this is the, it's kind of like a pinky colour, okay, a red litmus paper. And I can take this piece of paper I use the whole piece and I can dip that into my liquid. So here is my lemon juice and I've dipped it in and we can see there is no colour change. Okay, so I'm going to put that there. And that means, well I won't say what it means just yet, I'll just write what we've found. So we found red litmus paper stays red. I'll take some of my blue litmus paper next. So here's my blue litmus paper and I'm, you can see that sort of colour there. I'm going to dip that into the lemon juice and look at that colour change. Okay, So the blue litmus paper in the acid goes red. Okay. Next I'm going to go to my alkali and here I've got the um, washing powder mix of water. So I'll start again with my red litmus paper dip that in okay and we can see there with the red litmus paper the paper has gone blue I'll try it with my blue litmus paper in the same liquid and that one hasn't changed it's just stayed blue so blue litmus paper stays blue and then I've got my neutral solution. This is just some uh, tap water, and I'm going to test that using both of the litmus papers. Now, it might be a good opportunity to have a pause, have a think, and at what colour the two different colours litmus paper may go. Okay, so the, here we've got a red colour change from the blue paper and stays red with the red litmus paper. And we know that this, from our red cabbage indicator experiment, we know that the lemon juice is acidic. So acids go red with blue litmus paper and stay red with red litmus paper. We know from using our red cabbage indicator that the washing powder is an alkali. And we see that the blue litmus paper stayed blue and the red litmus paper went blue. So blue tells us it's an alkali. And now we're going to test the tap water. Now we know that water is neutral, so it's in that middle area between the acid and the alkali. Let's try the red litmus paper first. And we can see that has stayed red. And now let's try the blue litmus paper. What do we think that's going to do in the neutral solution? So there it is. Okay, and the blue litmus paper has stayed blue. So over here we have acidic, stays red or goes red. Over here we have alkali, and that goes blue or stays blue. And if it stays red or it stays blue, we have a neutral solution here in the middle. So that's litmus paper, another really useful indicator that we use in chemistry. Um, but it shows the importance of needing to use both colour papers. Because if I used my red paper and it just stayed red, I've only eliminated that it's not an alkali. It could be acid or neutral. And if I use my blue paper, and it stays blue, 
all I've managed to find out is it's either alkali or neutral. But if I use both papers, I can make that clear conclusion, is it an acid, a neutral, or an alkali? Hope that makes sense. Okay, here is one final indicator that I'd like to explain to you and tell you about today. So this is universal indicator, and I've got it in the form of a paper. Um, it does come as a liquid form as well, which starts off as a green color, neutral color. Um, and this gives us a much better range of acids, neutral and alkali. You can see there from that little guide there that we've got the red in the acid going through to green, number seven is neutral, and then going to this deep blue purple at the extreme of the alkali range. So this is called the pH scale and it runs from number one to number 14. One to three is our strong acids, four to six are weaker acids, seven is neutral, and then eight and nine being our weak alkalis going right up to 14, which is our strong alkali. Okay, so we can always refer our piece of universal indicator paper to that guide. So let's have a look. I'll take a piece of the indicator paper and I've got inside the book there, I've also got a colour guide which I can compare to. And I'm going to pop that into my lemon juice, which we know is acidic. And you can see, you can then colour match. And I would say that's probably pH 3, so it's giving us more information rather than just saying with the litmus paper where we just said it's acidic, we can talk about how acidic it is, okay, so it's a pH 3, so it's kind of a mid-range um, acid there, okay, and I can even look in the inside of the book here, and again I agree that it's probably a pH 3. Okay, so I'm going to take another piece of universal indicator paper. Like I said, this does come as a liquid as well. We use it as a liquid mostly in school. I'm going to put it into the washing powder now. And you can see there again, really, really deep blue colour. So these colours don't match up with the red cabbage indicator. So we have to know which indicator we're using and compare it to the right guide. Okay, so if I look here, I would say that's probably pH 10. Okay, so kind of a, a mid alkali there. Let's pop that one there. One more piece of um, universal indicator paper. This one's going into the tap water. And let's have a look you can see that that water is pH 7, which is neutral. Okay, so lots of different colours there as well. That one you can't readily get hold of, but you will have lots of fun with that in the lab in September. Thank you. So there you go, year six. You've now had your first chemistry lesson. Good opportunity to play around with indicators and test different substances in your home. There is a biology lesson and a physics lesson on their way. So have a look at those, um, get involved with those lessons as well. You are now officially a mini scientist. Congratulations.